Uh, well, it, it is true that our orchestra is called the Orchestra of the 18th Century because initially the orchestra performed works by Bach, Mozart, Haydn, early Beethoven, which are clearly, which were written in the 18th century itself. So in that way, the, the name of the orchestra is actually very good. However, we, in the course of the years, we became more and more aware that the rhetorical traditions of the 18th century, let us say, when the Latin school was still very much uh, there and pupils at school were trained in how to deliver, how to deliver a good speech according to certain rhetorical rules and translated into music on the same principles, actually. Uh, we found that in the first half of the 19th century, actually those old rules and the knowledge about rhetoric was still very much there. So we considered ourselves allowed to move into the 19th century as long as those rules still apply. Uh, one could say that those rules slowly but securely vanished together with the end of the Latin education uh, around the, the middle of the 19th century. Then it really stopped. So also the repertoire which we play of the 19th century uh, goes not further than that. To name a few composers, Brahms is already on the on the edge. Berlioz, definitely not any longer. So our 19th century repertoire ends uh, with Berlioz, that is to say around 1850. There we stop because there our orchestra and our instruments are, are not apt to, to do that. One could then change easily into a modern orchestra. The whole instruments of the orchestra as well, for instance, were already fully modernized and more like our modern orchestra by 1850. Actually, our orchestra consists of actually four types of orchestra. One is for the old repertoire, where we all come from, uh, let's say Bach and contemporaries. Uh, uh, one type of instrument, one diapason, one, one pitch, which is 415, then that's orchestra number one. And orchestra number two is slightly more modern instruments and a new pitch as well, not any longer 415, but 430. That's all documented. You can find the instruments in museums. That's all very clear. That's orchestra number two. Then we have a very special orchestra, which you may call a French opera orchestra, 
with which we play our Rameau, which is very, very isolated, typically French, uh, at French opera pitch, which was then very low, not for 30, but 392. Because the this, this French singers in the opera did not want to, say, to sing too, too high. Uh, so again, new instruments, new pitch. That's orchestra number three. And then we have the, the Schumann Brahms orchestra. Other instruments, again, more modernized, uh, like then pitch, like in the present day, 440. So there are times where we go on tour with, uh, with two of those periods, which means that everybody has to carry two instruments yeah. with him on tour. Which is very nice. We gladly, we gladly uh, do that. So the 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 Beethoven we play now is for orchestra number three. And if you realize that Chopin is not that much later than Beethoven, actually, Beethoven died in twenty seven. 1827, and the piano concertos are quite early Chopin. Uh, one could do that very well with a Beethoven orchestra. So that's what we do. We try and we do our best and we, we assemble as much information written and or not orally that's that's gone forever so mm -hmm. we we try to restore the sound of those periods and of those composers but god knows if it is really the truth because so many things are lost forever lost is the the social circumstance lost are most of the halls most of the halls we play in are actually nowadays far too big well, we have to we have to live with that uh, so one cannot say that that one is really reproducing everything for the full hundred percent far from that i personally am would be glad if if haydn would sit in the audience and would uh, would recognize his own music <laughs> i don't know one can only hope the, the best one can do one can do is be be utmost informed and we are thanks to the encyclopedic area era, era of the 18th century the age of enlightenment where pretty much is already is documented for us so that that helps us a great deal but you never know i would say the difference is the same when you would read a book written in the old times there is a difference if you read Shakespeare in English with a Shakespearean pronunciation or if you read Shakespeare in a Polish or a Dutch or an English or, or a foreign language. 
it, it makes a difference if you read things in the original language or in a translation. What we try is to play the music in its original language. And for that you need the original instruments. And we have those instruments. And they're all in museums, so you can make exact uh, copies, wind instruments, string instruments as well. Uh, it's, it's very well possible. To give you an example, of all the famous Stradivari instrument violins, which are still existing, if, if several hundreds, all are being modernized in the 19th century. There's only one in Oxford Ashmolean Museum which is still in its original state. All the other ones are, are, are modernized. The modernization, that might, might be interesting for listeners and viewers, uh, in the course of those centuries, halls became bigger and bigger and bigger. Audiences became, uh, concerts became more and more public concerts and not any longer attached to some uh, royal court or so. So what violin players did, they went to their violin builder saying, Sir, can you do something with my violin? Because it's just not loud enough. Could you make it louder? Yes, the luthier said, we, I can make it louder for you. Then I have to, to dismantle your violin, open it up, reinforce the interior, so that the tension of your strings can be more, and then your instrument will be louder. But first I have to strengthen the, the interior of the violin, otherwise your, the two blades of your violin will collapse. So that was done. So violins and strings, also, also wind instruments, were able to play louder, and that that's that's what was necessary then. So when you play on old instruments, you have to you have to to go to restore back, open the instrument again, then you still see the traces where it originally how the state was originally, and then you can uh, assemble it again, and, and, and you're, it's done. Oh yes, yeah, sure. His, uh, the, the, his uh, conception of piano composition and of piano playing was uh, was unheard those days. There he had a little predecessor in the Irish composer John Field, but uh, the quality of that music is so much less good than than, than Chopin's music. So it's it's extraordinary, sure. Yeah. 